So basically, Chagorin had just actually proved long before the hypermodern era of the Nimzo engine that how nights, the environment for them, and how open, semi-open files from the opponent are not necessarily effective. It really does depend on the, the individual features of the position. So really, you know, it's a kind of anti, if the style was becoming what we call technique, this is very, very important for the evolution style that we have this figurehead, Shigurin, saying, no, chess is not just about technique. You cannot just deduce things like from pawn structure or whatever, the technique of the game. Because the game can follow creative paths. You can actually create the environment for, for your trump cards, your imbalances. You can have the two knights, but you can maximize the, the effectiveness of your two knights. He's, he's just proven that with this game which is why it's a, it's a really important game from an ideological perspective, giving up you know, not just the light square bishop, but the dark square bishop, and how the knights just became stronger and stronger. In particular, at first, he was going for this d5 square by these ceiling moves, getting a pawn to f5 and c4 later. So we see that, that pattern emerging here. By, by getting these pawns there, he's securing d5, as his first target for the knights but then you know his, his rook reuse is, is also very interesting because it sort of encourages white to trap the light square bishop with a pawn on a4 and the white rooks really have no, nothing effective to do on that g file the bishop can cannot really coordinate for an attack on g7 so it also not only shows the two knights dominating the bishops but also you know how the presence of semi-open files can be just token without the position you know really fully supporting it it can be token and ineffective so the next stage of this plan was some subtle maneuvering and even undoubling of white's pawns which gave Shigorin access to the fifth rank and even more squares to start playing with in particular outrageously from this position e5 becoming important strategically for black because after the undoubling of pawns through this virtual you know pawn exchange e5 is getting more and more significant here to the extent that uh, you know somehow white was encouraged to take with d takes e5 giving black a strong post on e5 for the knights it's this subtle maneuvering putting more and more pressure with this rerouting for this knight here and then again to c6 where again it will put pressure on d4 that this encouraged in this position because of that pressure on a a4 as well it encouraged this strategically like losing move in effect d takes e5 almost strategically losing if this this e5 knight cannot be dislodged it's a real monster in the position an octopus um, so really uh, white's really struggling here positionally and not only that the rooks have magically become much more active than the white rooks so the whole climate of the position has literally changed almost refuting a Steinitzian generalization, a, you know, the, the power of the two bishops. Uh, it's really putting it in, in a dramatic um, context. So we have here, you know, some ideas that the hypermoderns can also pick up on later, like Nimzovich, you know, with, with his with my system and the Nimzovich engine, you know, giving up the bishop very quickly to try and create a favorable environment for the knights. So here, it's it's just amazing that now, in, in, the, in the specifics of the position, it's a, impossible to defend against this rook coordination so that's what really finally finishes off white not not the knights themselves but uh, the two rooks and this this pawn provide a mating that so white has to give up the bishop so there's something quite radical for the evolution of style that uh, Shigorin was a continual reminder um, and there's another two classic games in the Shigorin defense but this is simply taking an example of a Steinitzian deduction you know the two bishops and basically showing that you can completely change the context that that is no longer an asset it might actually be a disadvantage to have the two bishops it might be better to have the two knights so if he can reverse those values he can prove that chess is a very dynamic game that it doesn't have to be driven by dogma by generalizations and it seems to me that you know Tarash uh, crystallized a lot of the Steinitzian generalizations and, and created dogmatic rules which were easy and convenient for people to follow so in a way that also sparked more of this rebellion I think later with the hypermodern revolution that it wasn't just Steinitz but Tarash you know 
reinforcing uh, Steinitz and making it you know easier to access. But uh, against this, you know, these creatives, these individualists, looking at the, the details, the individual details of the position, how they change the factors. That's really important. That there is this tension in chess. Otherwise, it would have just been seen as a routine, you know, technique game of technique. So um, please leave any comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much. By the way, just to put names to faces for the Hastings 18, 1895 tournament. Uh, so here we have Albin, Schletter, Janowski, Marco, Blackburn, Moroxi, known for the Moroxi bind, <laughs> Scheifers, Gunsberg, Burn, Tinsley. So seated, we have Vagani. We have Steinitz, who we'll be looking at, the first official world champion. And here is our person of interest at the moment, Shigorin. Veroni narrowly was defeated in the second match versus Steinitz. And this, in this 1895 tournament, he defeated Vasca, which is the game we just saw. Then we have Pillsbury, you know, a, 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 very, a, a very dramatic player who was unfortunately very short-lived. Um, he was a brilliant player, created some legacies like the Pillsbury Bind, and he won this tournament, rather surprisingly, you know, considering he had like two world champions in it, as well as Shigorin. Um, so then we have also here Tarash, Mises, and Teichman. Okay, so this is a super strong tournament, the strongest of its time, the first of the you know annual Hastings Chess Congresses. So we just saw how Shigorin beat Laska. So I just wanted to put some names to faces there. Thanks very much.